measures of skewness. So in this recording, we're going to talk about different measures of skewness. So skewness, you know, that is the meaning, it means lack of symmetry, right, or asymmetry. So in symmetrical distribution, we have already seen that mean, median, mode, they are going to coincide with each other. Right, in a symmetrical distribution, mean, median, mode, they are going to coincide with each other. Let me just write this once more. <clears throat> mean, median, mode, they're going to coincide with each other in the symmetrical distribution. But there can be the case that uh, uh, there are extreme observation on the right-hand side of the distribution. So this is going to make the distribution positively skewed, right? For example, so you have like this, <clears throat> you have frequency out here, and you have a curve like this. Well, you want to make it more dramatic. like this. So it has a tail, long tail going towards the right hand side of the distribution. Uh, so what happens is this is where the mode is. 50% of the distribution, they come somewhere here, right? And this guy is the mean. This guy is the mean, I'll use a different ink of the distribution. So there can be the case that in the distribution, extreme values are to the right of distribution. So here, this is the mode. This guy is the median and this guy is the mean. And this is the positively skewed distribution. This is the positively skewed distribution. So mean is greater than median is greater than uh, uh, mode. Similarly, you have the negatively skewed distribution also where the extreme values are towards the left of distribution, right? So this is going to make the distribution look like this. We have done all this in our earlier class. I'm just repeating it for so that we can re recap what is it that we have done. So you have a distribution like this, right? Well, you have mode out here. 50% of the values are going to be somewhere here. And this is, let's say, is going to be the mean. Hmm? So this is mode. This is median. And this is X bar. And this is what you're negatively. Skewed distribution is. This is what is negatively skewed distribution is. Uh, so what is it that we know? In case of skewed distribution, whether it is positively skewed or negatively skewed, the mean, median, and mode, they are not coinciding with each other. They are not equal, right? So there is the first measure of skewness, which is the Carl Pearson's measure of skewness, which is measuring the distance between mean and the mode, right? The divergence of mean and mode. So Carl Pearson's measure 
it is based upon the divergence of mean from mode. So how do you write this? Minus mode upon the standard deviation, upon standard deviation, right? Well, this is a scale-free measure, right? This guy is a scale-free measure. And for the symmetrical distribution, even mean, mean, mean minus mode can also be approximated by three, thrice of mean minus median. They could be approximated by thrice of mean minus median. Uh, so if this measure is equal to zero, right? So you say that distribution is symmetrical about the mean. distribution is symmetrical about me, right? And then you have SKP greater than zero is distribution is skewed to the right. So if mean, median, mode, they're equal. So of course, this SKP is going to be equal to zero. Well, if mean is greater than your mode, uh, then this SKP is going to be greater than zero. While SKP is going to be less than zero, If, it's, if it is skewed to the left, if it is skewed to the left, right? so if mean is less than mode, you will have the negative measure of skewness out here. Uh, uh, so mean minus mode and the standard deviation, they are in the same units, right? They have the same scale. So it will be canceled out. So mean minus mode upon standard deviation. Their units will be canceled out and it is a scale-free measure. So one good thing about the Carl Pearson's measure is that it is independent of scale. SKP is independent of scale. See, mean minus mode, it has the same units. Standard deviation is in the same units. So when, when you take the ratio of these two, they will be canceled out. Uh, but the other problem is, it depends upon extreme values. It depends upon extreme values. Huh? So this is the advantage of Carl Pearson's measure. And this guy is the disadvantage of Carl Pearson's measure. So it is basically the presence of the extreme values, which is bringing about this right tailed or left tailed distribution, right? Okay, then there is the another measure of distribution. The, I mean, this is Bowley's coefficient of skewness. So let me write that.
Bowley's measure of skewness. So what is Bowley's measure of skewness is saying it is this, it is saying that it is based upon quartiles. Uh, it is based upon quartiles. So the reason uh, I think Bowley uh, came, came up with this measure of skewness was that Carl Pearson's measure was affected by extreme values. Now, what you are doing out here is that you are taking up the difference between Q3 and Q1, approximately saying here. So you are not affected by the extreme values, right? You're not affected by the extreme value. So in a way, uh, so you have uh, what? Your uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, right? So Q1 is 25%. Like this, da, da, da. should I mark this? So you have, let's say, a distribution like this. And you have 125% of the distribution here, half of the distribution here. This is the another 75% of the distribution. So mainly, uh, what do you call the extreme values are going to push the uh, these ends, right? So if you are not taking the values before Q1 and values before Q3, and you are left out with only this part of uh, of, uh, of the distribution. So you have sort of, what, what you have done is that you have sort of uh, gone over the, the disadvantage of Carl Pearson's measure, right? But this also becomes the, uh, the, the disadvantage of Bowley's measure. That it's, its own advantage becomes disadvantage. What? That it is not utilizing the entire data. That is also there. So the advantage is right. Uh, you call this measure as SKQ or whatever. So Bowley's measure. SKQ does not. depend upon extreme values and this advantage is also the disadvantage that it is not utilizing the entire data does not utilize the data fully. Right, it does not utilize the data fully. Uh, so for symmetrical distribution, so if you have a distribution like this, uh, for, for a symmetrical distribution, what is seen is that Q1 and Q3, they are equidistant from the median. A symmetrical distribution Q1 and Q3 
are equidistant from median, right? So Q3, sorry, Q3 minus Q2 and Q2 minus Q1, right? This thing, this difference uh, can be taken as as an absolute measure measure of skewness. So how do you write this? You say Q3 minus Q2 minus Q2 minus Q1 all upon Q3 minus Q2 plus Q2 minus Q1. So when you write it properly, what you'll be getting is Q3 minus, Q3 plus Q1, sorry, minus 2Q2. All upon Q3 minus Q1. all upon Q3 minus Q1, right? So even here, so what do you have is that uh, if SKQ is equals to zero, it is symmetrical. About mean. If SKQ is greater than zero, it is skewed to the right. While if SKQ is less than zero, it is skewed to the left. is skewed to the left, right? Okay, so this is uh, what I wanted to do in this class, right? Thank you, Vita. There is, yeah, this much I wanted to do better in this class. Thank you.